everybody welcome back to my little studio so today i've got a weaving video so the other day i got a message on etsy from a really kind uh, person asking me if i could please please remake a weaving that i had made over two years ago she had it saved to her favorites and now was the time that she wanted to order it but at the moment i don't really make a lot of woven wall hangings anymore and especially not any made to order weaving so i was a little bit hesitant at first but she was so kind and i thought you know why not and then i also decided to make a video out of it so that you can benefit from it as well so i'm using the same materials as i did uh, more than two years ago and I'm using beautiful textured yarns and some merino wool roving and I've also got this beautiful wooden loom with a heddle on it and I'm using warp string and some shuttles there are a lot of different ways that you can make weavings you can weave upside down you can weave bottom up and I'm doing it my way so that's what i'm teaching you i'm teaching you how i do it how it suits me best and i want you to know that there are a lot of different ways to do it so the way that i finish the the top of the weaving might not be the best way or you know so i'm just showing you how i do it and um i hope you can learn something so let's get started We're going to start by warping the loom with this cotton string that I have here. I've marked the edges of the size I want and I'm going to simply knot the string to the beam. Then I'm pulling the string to the top of my loom and I place the thread in the heddle making sure I make a straight line. Then I go around the peg back into the next slot on the heddle and then I go back down and this is important I go back in the same slot around the peg and I do all this while holding tension that's very important so I do the same thing here I go back in the same slot at the top go back down keep tension and go back in the same slot and around the peg so I basically warp the slots twice to go around the next peg and go down up and down and it's very important to keep tension at all time so it can be a little bit uh, hard to do but with some practice you'll manage so now i'm all the way to the end i cut off the string and i'm going to knot it to the beam again this time it's quite difficult to keep the tension on so I'm wrapping it around the beam twice and then I'm making a knot with the last warp string and then I'm done. If now you don't have enough tension you could rotate this bar at the top and then you can make the tension harder. I'm going to weave from the bottom to the top and some people do it the other way around but I like to see my weaving come to life so I'm starting with a few base rows with this chunky yarn and I'm going to use my shuttle for this so I'll show you how to wrap the shuttle so I go around these pegs and then around the other one go back in the middle and then it's kind of stuck there so that's what you want and then you can just wrap the shuttle some people do it differently but this works for me and it's really easy so I'll just wrap it a few times because I only need a few rows so I'm using my heddle and I'm going to go in somewhere from the side because I don't want the tails all the way on the edge. I'm knotting the yarn to the warp string, then I turn my heddle and I go back and I'm going to go all the way back to the other side making sure that all my yarn goes through the shed, that's what it's called.
and I'm going to make a wave like this and then I'm going to push it down and I'm going to use this beautiful comb. This bamboo comb is one of the gorgeous items featured in my kit on Etsy. There I have this beautiful weaving kit with everything you need to make a lovely weaving and you even get a pattern. So I rotated my heddle again and I'm going back through. So with a heddle loom it's really easy to weave rows. You always want straight edges, that's why you're making waves. I'm going to hold the edge here to make sure that that string, warp string, isn't moving. And then I'm pushing it down like this. In this way your warp strings always stay straight. If you don't do it this way it will get tighter and tighter and it won't look as good. So let me show you from the side. So here by rotating the heddle bar you create a space in between the warp strings. This is called the shed. And that's where you put the shuttle in. And by rotating it one way or the other, you put up either the even strings or the uneven strings. And that's how you do it. I've woven a few rows and knotted it to the warp string. This piece is going to be a shaggy weaving with a lot of textures, different kind of yarns. And for the bottom part I'm making a fringe as they call it. And this fringe is made out of raya nuts. So I've taken a few different yarns cut off a certain length and now I'm going to wrap them around these three warp strings. I'm taking the one on the right, taking all my yarns going under it like this. Then I'm taking the warp string on the left of the three and doing the same thing for the left part of the yarns and then I'm going to pull it down, make sure that at the bottom they are even you can adjust it like this and then pull it down and now you've made a raya knot. It's as simple as that. So I finished all rows and now I'm going to make a, another baseline with this simple white yarn. Exactly the same as I made the first baseline and this is important because you want to lock in these raya knots. These are quite loose and by weaving a few rows on top of them they will stay in place. Now we're going to add some texture with this roving. It's a merino wool which has not been spun and it's got this lovely fluffy texture which is really great for weaving. So I'm going to split it. You can just pull it apart like this. Really easy. And we're going to use this strand to make some cloud-like textures and I'm going to knot it to the warp string because that makes it easier in the end and then I'm going to just simply and randomly wrap it around and under some warp strings like you see me do right here. I also use this technique to weave fun little clouds and I've also made a video for them. So if you're interested in learning more about this technique then you can head over to my video. The link is in the top right corner. I'm going to continue with this weaving needle. It's a really handy tool if you want to weave in some yarns like this. And I'm going to weave a little patch of the tweed yarn on the right. You can also easily use the heddle loom for this or you can simply weave it by going under and over each warp thread.
adding another patch here at the bottom. And I also will add some more fluffy goodness with this gorgeous merino roving. So I'm going to add another puff right here and then in the middle I'm going to have this waterfall of beautiful yarns. But first I have to make sure that the roving is locked in. So I'm going to weave some rows on top of it, just two or three rows and then uh, make sure it's tucked in nicely and this way the roving won't go anywhere. Make sure to fluff up the clouds when you're done and as you can see the diagonal movement is getting very clear now. On the right I'm adding a patch of a very textured grey yarn. This weaving is made up of a very neutral palette. Lots of whites, greys and a little bit of green. So why not add some natural materials to it? So I've got this raffia here and I'm going to weave it in. I think it really complements the other colors. So I took a few strands of the raffia and now I'm going to weave it in. It's a bit harder than normal yarn but if you are persistent you are able to pull it off. And you will see that it gives a really great texture and the color adds something to this weaving for sure. Here you see that you can actually weave in all kinds of material. You could also use leather, maybe dried flowers even, or you know, be creative and have some fun. So now for the so-called waterfall in the middle, which is really going to be the center of the piece. So I'm going to add some more raya knots and they're going to be textured with different kinds of yarns and flowing down in the middle. 
if you notice that I'm wearing different sleeves every time. In this video I think I'm wearing like seven different outfits. There's a lot of work going into making a video like this and it takes several days guys. But I love doing it so and I really appreciate you guys coming to my videos, liking them, subscribing to my channel. I'm really excited about it. So when I'm looking at this I'm not really happy. I want the one on the bottom here to go lower to really go all the way down to the bottom of the fringe and that's much better looks gorgeous. I've added a patch of the grey yarn and some more of the white and tweed yarn as well and now I'm going to fill up the top part with this uh, chunky slop yarn in white. I'm using my shuttle for this. I'm going to wind the shuttle with the entire ball of yarn because I'll need a lot. So on the left I'm going to start with making small rows and then working my way up until I reach the top of my weaving. On to the last few rows. As you can see it's a little bit curvy. That's also because the yarn is thick thin yarn and that makes it curvy sometimes. So I'm just going to make sure the top is straight in the end. I finish the top of my weavings with the hem stitch. This is to make sure that the rose can't come loose when it's hung on the wall. The stitch pinches together the warp strings and attach them to some of the rows of weaving. You can choose how many warp strings you want to pinch. I'm doing two. So I'm going under two and under two rows of weaving and coming up there. Then I make a C out of my yarn, go back under the two same warp strings and through the hole of the C and then pull it all together and I'm continuing all the way to the end. I've now turned over my piece and I want to make sure that the back is quite neat. So I'm weaving in some tails as you can see right here and cut them then off short. The roving is actually also woven back in on some strings available on the back and then tucked in. And some of the tails I had already knotted to the warp strings so I can cut these short.
time to take her off the loom so I've pulled back all the fringe and I'm going to make sure that the bottom baseline is well pushed up and then we can start cutting off the warp strings I do this two at a time and then knot them together so that the woven rows on the bottom can go anywhere and I do this for every two warp strings all the way till the end and then the bottom is loose and all the tension is gone so straighten her out and then rotate the handlebar and you can slide it out under there and I'm going to make sure that I have enough space on the top so that I can have long strings to finish my weaving on the top. I'm going to use this gorgeous brass dowel to attach it to. It's a bit too long now, so I have to sew off a little piece. So I've turned over my weaving and I'm going to knot the warp strings to my brass dowel. I'm going to do it four at a time, so two by two, and then make a knot and make sure that the knot is coming to the edge of the weaving so that you don't see it in the front. And to make it easier for myself, I'm first going to pull up every other two strings over the dowel and start knotting them all at once. There are different ways to finish the top of your weaving and this is by far not the easiest one. It also has to do with the fact that I'm weaving from bottom to top. On the back you are now left with these tails and I've decided to weave them in in the back. You could also just cut them off and hang it on the wall, you won't see it. Uh, I like using this lovely needle for it which has a crooked end which makes it easier to maneuver in between the woven rows. It's important to not pull too hard and hold on to the dowel because otherwise you will start pulling things apart and that's not good. Afterwards you can cut these off here. Since the dowel is hollow you can pull a string through it and then have a nice string to hang your weaving on. And that's it guys, it's done. Okay, that was it for this video i really hope you enjoyed it so if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel you can click the red button uh, below this video it's for free don't forget those thumbs up they really help me with the algorithm and help my videos get seen more and my channel has been growing and growing i'm so excited and thank you so much guys so i hope to see you next time i will have some more uh, videos that are going to be about punch needle and very informative. Um, I'm making a video about which punch needle you should buy and I'm going to make a video about all the different fabrics you can use with punch needle. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe. Bye! Bye! Bye!